don't know his uh, he's had a lot of experience in um, doing this uh, uh, estimate uh, contract with estimate yeah, thank you sir uh, i would like to thank uh, professor sp singh sir and uh, professor kamaljeet singh sir uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, they both have been uh, my teachers and actually shama ma'am all of the people here have been my teachers so it's a huge privilege for me so i'll be starting with uh, msics uh, astigmatism management and mainly uh, the technological advances in ophthalmology have grown by leaps and bounds and it is not only our uh, it is not only our duty to improve the patient's vision but also to refine it and proper management of astigmatism is what leads to excellent visual outcomes in these cases and to achieve emetropia is the target nowadays even in sics so uh, the goals of the surgery are mainly painless visual recovery uh, we should have a spectacle independence uh, the correction of pre existing astigmatism is very important uh, and the repeatability of uh, surgical result and the amount of surgically induced astigmatism which we cause should be noted and a sustained quality of vision should be provided so as we've already talked about there are uh, two types of astigmatism mainly with the rule and against the rule and against the rule is the one that we usually deal with because uh, most of the patients uh, that we deal with are older patients uh, who are undergoing cataract surgeries so uh, the main factors affecting astigmatism uh, which we'll deal with later are uh, incision characteristics the use of cautery uh, and the use and non use of suture which may uh, cause astigmatism and there should be a proper pre operative assessment of pre existing astigmatism in all of these cases so uh, we usually measure the astigmatism by the help of retinoscopy uh, keratometry or corneal topo topography uh, the mainstay uh, these days is corneal topography but uh, in cases where there is uh, poor uh, fixation corneal abnormalities uh, distorted myers or highly toric cornea we still go for a manual keratometer so uh, how to correct the astigmatism with sics Uh, usually if there is pre-existing astigmatism the incision characteristic is very important uh, the size of the incision the larger the incision the greater the flattening and the smaller the incision the lesser the flattening and the important thing to note is that we should always uh, operate on the steeper axis and this uh, we can make out with the keratometry findings which we've uh, got then the other thing is that the distance from the cornea the farther the incision from the cornea the lesser the astigmatism and the closer uh, the incision to the cornea the more the astigmatism and uh, this was a uh, theory which was given by cox and uh, he said that astigmatically neutral zone is the zone where we should uh, configure uh, the our incision onto and uh, it was derived on two important equations that surgically induced astigmatism is uh, directly proportional to the length of incision to the power th uh, cube and uh, it is inversely related to the distance of incision which we've already talked about so this is a funnel which is uh, which base is at the limbus which is around 3 mm at the limbus and as it moves away it widens so uh, this is the area where we should uh, provide the incision so if we are closer to the cornea Uh, we have to be within this uh, funnel uh, for least ma uh, amount of astigmatism uh, the other thing is uh, the type of incision whether it is superior incision temporal incision or superior temporal incision uh, during our uh, post graduation days we are usually taught superior incision because it is it is easy to learn uh, uh, there is more wound protection and lesser chances of infection and uh, lesser foreign body sensation for the patient but uh, temporal incision uh, is preferred in cases where there is e deep sockets smaller eyes and if a future trabeculectomy is needed and the important thing is that uh, because most of the patients are against the rule so temporal incision is a better incision to make so uh, it is based on the theory of coupling which suggests that the flattening effect is achieved at the tissue and steepening is produced 90 degree away due to the phenomena of coupling and surgically induced astigmatism is minus 1 to uh, 1.5 diopter which has been seen at 90 degree if a 6.5 mm incision is placed so uh, it has been studied by gokhale at all uh, that superior incision causes around 1.28 diopters of surgically induced astigmatism but it may be different for uh, each surgeons and so it is very important to note our uh, own amount of surgically induced astigmatism that we cause Uh, the best incision is superior temporal incision which causes the least amount of astigmatism and uh, as we've already talked about the amount of uh, the length of the incision uh, the more the astigmatism will be present 
Uh, the other thing is cautery. Uh, if we do excessive cautery, there occurs scleral shrinkage and scleral necrosis, which may cause uh, increase in the astigmatism. So how to correct this uh, pre-existing astigmatism? In mild astigmatism uh, cases, we have to operate on the steeper axis, as I've already talked about. Uh, we can neutralize by changing the site of incision. If it is an, uh, against the rule, astigmatism will go for a temporal incision. And if it is with the rule, we go for a superior incision. Uh, we can go for a limbal relaxing incisions, which are uh, incisions which are made just 0.5 millimeter in front of the limbus uh, at a 90% depth and it is usually 600 uh, mu and uh, there are uh, in instruments which come with a garden knife and we can use that and we usually make it on the steeper meridian in front of the limbus. So this is uh, a case where uh, we are doing SICS and a limbal relaxing incision is giving. So we make the superior incision and uh, to cancel it out, uh, we are providing with a limbal relaxing incision in this cases. Uh, we do not enter the uh, anterior chamber during this. So we measured the amount of usually 30 degree uh, is the amount of that is one clock hour uh, is the amount where we take the limbal relaxing incision. We can correct the amount of astigmatism with the help of uh, nomograms. There are multiple nomograms which are present for limbal relaxing incision. There is a LRI uh, calculator also dot com which can help you decide how much astigmatism will be corrected according to that. Uh, uh, it is very imperative to check these calculations and a 90 de degree of uh, error is the most common error. And as we've already, already talked about that the steeper axis is the one where we have to uh, make the incision to make it flatter. Uh, the other uh, important thing to note in this case is that in younger patients, we have to make a larger incision and in, lesser pa uh, in older patients, we have to make a smaller incision, like smaller than the 30 degree of paired incision. And one uh, clock hour of paired incision corrects around one diopter of corneal astigmatism in these cases. So these are the multiple nomograms which have been given according to the clock hours, uh, how many diopters we can uh, correct, the limbal relaxing incisions. So uh, one diopter, if you want to correct uh, one incision at the steeper meridian can be made. If we make a two incisions at the steeper me meridian, we can correct around two diopters. So uh, we can manage it according to these nomograms. The advantages of this is that there is less tendency of shift in the resultant cylindrical axis and irregular corneal flattening and irregular astigmatism is not there, which are mostly seen with arcuate incisions. And uh, it is mostly easier to perform than a shorter and centrally placed incisions. And they usually exhibit a one is to one coupling ratio. So the other thing that we can go for is a opposite clear corneal incision. This was a uh, thing which was given by liver and Dan and they approached the cornea with a clear corneal incision, adding an identical incision on the opposite side. It is usually used in uh, phaco emulsification where we can, uh, if there is more astigmatism, we can add uh, opposite uh, clear corneal incision in these cases. But even in SICS, we've uh, made incisions like this and that can correct the amount of astigmatism in these cases. So this uh, technique usually involves creating two biplanar uh, 3.2 millimeter incisions, which is 180 degrees uh, from each other. And they are placed like 1.5 to 2 millimeter inside the edge of the limbal vessels along the steeper meridian of the cornea. So uh, usually in cases where there is low astigmatism, we go for a frown incision at a three millimeter behind the cornea, usually at the superior temporal site. In moderate cases where there is one to two diopter, we can go for a small incision centered along the steeper meridian about six millimeter and straight in relation to limbus because the straighter the incision, the uh, more astigmatism will be corrected. And in high cases, we go for a combination of uh, small incision profile, the uh, incision characteristic and with limbal relaxing incision in these cases. And post-operative, if there is still astigmatism, we can go for astigmatic keratotomy, a wound revision or an eczema laser. So the take home message is that uh, we should do a careful identification of astigmatism magnitude and meridian both pre-operative and intraoperative, And uh, we should go for a step ladder approach based on the magnitude as we've talked about. And uh, the techniques can be effectively combined for uh, correcting a higher level of astigmatism. And we should always apply the incision on the steeper axis. That is why keratometry is important. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prono, nice presentation and it's very in informative. As you, I already said that is this part is very important in cortex surgery, either FACO, ISI, anything. Money is very important. You should know uh, what are the different type of the, this uh, incisions and how much it uh, leads to the estimates. And before that, peer adaptability it is very important to assess the estimates. So this is very, um, uh, this is informative. 
uh, an excellent lecture. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So we come to the conclusion of this session, and thanks a lot. We have a very good uh, program after this. At 7:30, we have Shan, Shan Singh. Who is it? Who is it? Who is Shan? Our program. Shan Singh from Prayagraj is coming. <laughs> so he'll be dancing and uh, singing. So you have a big program there and the banquet. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor S. P. Singh. Dr. Shama, Dr. Maurya Saab, and uh, Dr. Pranav, and, and, and the audience, because you are the greatest source of inspiration for any.